pages of internal police documents, and I interviewed half a dozen diving experts across the country. These interviews and records suggest that inadequate training and equipment contributed to Leonard's death. Craig Lehner's drowning is still being investigated by the State Department of Labor. Buffalo Police finished their investigation, but are not releasing the report. Three weeks ago, Lehner's family filed a notice of claim against the city, the precursor to a lawsuit. Police declined to be interviewed, citing this pending litigation. The Niagara River is far more treacherous than what Lehner was accustomed to. He trained all of five times, according to police records, in the relatively still and contained waters of the Buffalo River and the Union Ship Canal. The Niagara River was also nothing like the calm, clear waters of the Caribbean, where he got his scuba certification in 2014. None of the experts I interviewed wanted to speak about the specifics of Lehner's drowning, but the practices they described for police diving operations elsewhere stand in contrast to what's done here at the Buffalo Police Department. In my professional opinion, you don't put somebody into harm's way to train for something that's unlikely to occur without um, really taking additional precautions. Beginning underwater training in still and contained waters is standard practice. But Lehner, despite just a handful of dives with the team, was put in fast-moving water for a training exercise. And according to police records, that was his first time in swift currents like that. Also keep in mind, the team hadn't trained in the Niagara River for more than a year. To have mission to accomplish, ensure your risk, is worth the reward. And for swift water, there are a multitude of dangers that come with that. Detective Leo McGrath commands the underwater recovery team whose 18 members search and retrieve evidence and perform the occasional rescue. While Detective McGrath has 32 years of diving experience, he is not certified to be a public safety diving instructor. The police say that's not necessary, but experts agree it's a good idea. Lehner lacked two pieces of safety equipment that could have potentially saved his life. One, called a quick snap tackle, allows a diver to quickly release himself when their tether gets snagged on an object. A police source confirmed Lehner wasn't wearing one. The source also told Investigative Post that Buffalo Police do not use snap shackles because they are unsafe to use when divers are swimming under overhead cover, such as ice. Lehner was diving in open water that was 65 degrees. Lehner didn't have another important piece of equipment. The biggest advancement in public safety diving in, in recent years is the full face mask that incorporates a regulator that's built into the mask, which allows for electronic communications. Minus this equipment, Lehner could only make signals by pulling the rope he was attached to, a challenge in swift currents and if the tether gets tightened. Plus, Police told the Buffalo News that the current in the Niagara River is strong enough. Digital breakup, sorry. Ah, oh. oh, come on. You need to make sure that your divers are prepared uh, with the proper equipment and the proper procedures and certainly the proper training to perform in that environment. It will be some time before we know definitively what happened to Officer Craig Lehner on that fatal dive. I'll keep following the story to see whether his family does indeed file a lawsuit against the city. For Channel 2 News, I'm Daniela Porat with Investigative Post. Thank you, Daniela. And Investigative Post also found that the police dive team had limited rescue and emergency training. You can find more on that part of the story by visiting investigativepost.org.